danger. I'll be grinding glass to a powder, handling corrosive acids, and putting platinum group metals in solution in this video. My work will be done in a fume hood to vent the gases and particulate away from my work area. Doing this kind of work in an enclosed area or without proper safety equipment could cause serious injury or death. Hello YouTube viewers. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sri Tips. Today what we're going to do is I have some hard disk drive platters here. Uh, and what we're going to do is try to recover some precious metals out of these platters. These were sent to me by a fella named James Hunter out in Emerson, Nebraska. So thank you, James. I appreciate you uh, sending this material in so we can make this video. And I've got them stacked up here in stacks of 20. I've got uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, and then there's 12 here. Plus one in the blender out there that I already ground up. So I've got a total of 93 of these hard disk drive platters uh, from James. Uh, they're made out of glass. They're out of uh, laptop PCs. They're smaller. They're only about three inches wide here. And I've done some research and I found a uh, thread on the Gold Refining Forum uh, written by a fellow named Gold Silver Pro. Gold Silver Pro on the Gold Refining Forum. And he talks about these. And according to this thread that he wrote, he did some calculations, it will take 900 of these particular types of hard disk platters, 900 of them, in order to be able to recover one gram of pure platinum. I have 93 here that James sent to me, and so the expected yield here is only going to be about one-tenth of one gram. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go out here and grind these up and we're going to try to extract any platinum that I can from these hard disk drive platters. And we're going to do that right now. Here's the uh, 93 hard disk platters all spread out so you can take and get a good look at them. They're very uh, smooth surface made of glass very shiny. They have a tendency to stick together and you got to pry them apart. So let's go out and uh, see if we can extract some metals from these. Alright, here we go. I'm going to take one of the discs. I've got an old blender here that I bought at the thrift store. I drop the disc down in there. I'm going to turn this thing on and see what happens. two or three in at once here. That's three stacked together. Let's see what happens here. All right, I'm getting a little bit of glass fragments coming out of some holes here in the top of the lid. That's powdered glass. Don't want to be breathing any of this stuff. But that's how it's looking down into the uh, blender there. All right, I'm getting some powdered glass coming out at me. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm in the fume hood here, so it's drawing any of that stuff away so I don't breathe it. I'm going to put a little water in here, distilled water. And we're going to try to make a slurry out of this and see if that will help. Put a few more discs in. Cover it up and turn it on. Let's see what happens here. Trying to make a slurry out of this glass material. Here we go. Alright, let's look down in here and see how that did. It's 
got pieces of stuff everywhere. But I think that's going to work pretty good. It, uh, it'll chop them pieces up and keep them uh, suspended in that water so it can be ground up real fine. Put a few more in here. There's about five of them. Put the lid on and we'll light this thing off. See what happens. Here we go. In this shot, I'm using a, a wash bottle to rinse down the larger pieces off the inside of the uh, blender there. Put a few more of the discs in, light it off, and if you notice here, they just kind of lay flat on the surface and spin. They're not getting ground up. Here I've got about a third of the discs in that blender, and it's getting crowded in there so that the uh, blades can't come into contact with the platters and break them apart so they can get ground up. I'm trying to keep the, the dust that's produced from it down. Here we are. It's not going as smoothly as I thought it would. It's working, they're grinding up. But they're uh, got to pick it up, and shake it, and move them things around continually before they'll uh, get ground up into a fine powder like I want it. Got about half of the discs ground up into a fine powder. I'm going to get them out of that blender and make some room for the remaining discs. All right, I've let this uh, grind up for several minutes. It's in a fine powder. It stayed inside there. I'm going to get this out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer that slurry into this. Uh, large two-liter beaker here. up out of the way. Get our blender back down here and we'll uh, add a few more discs and keep going with this until I get it all ground up. Now that this thing's been emptied out and there's some room in there, it's uh, working pretty good here. Right, this is the last few went in. going to liquefy for a few minutes here. Everything's ground up. Liquefy. Alright, this thing's been running now for several minutes. I think it's gave all that it can. I've got it ground up as fine as I possibly can. This second group, I'm going to move that out of here now into this container That's what it looks like down in there finally ground up 
as fine as I can get it anyway. All right, I used a large filter paper and fitted it down into this uh, Buckner funnel. What I'm going to do now is try to uh, filter the solution off of here. And just keep the solids. Okay, I've got most of the liquid off of the uh, material in the beaker. I'm making this up. As I go, as usual, I've never done this before, never worked with this kind of material. I'm adding uh, hydrochloric acid to the beaker here. I'm gonna cover this up here and we'll put this up on the heat and start adding some low heat here. All right, I'm filtering the solids out of this liquid. And what we'll do is after once uh, we got all the liquid out of there, we'll add the filter down here to this beaker. We got some heat going to the uh, beaker now. That hydrochloric acid in there with the uh, material that's been ground up. And I'm starting to get a little bit of reaction. The solution is turning green, gray color. All right, I've had this on filtering now for about an hour and a half. Exactly what I thought would happen happened. Those finely ground up pieces of material have clogged that filter. It's filtering out, but it's coming out drops at a time down here. I've had this solution on now for about an hour. What I'm gonna do now is reach down in here and get some of the solution in a uh, I bet here. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I've got a test plate down here set up. I'm going to put some of the solution over here, two drops of it in this cavity. I'll put two drops in this cavity. Two, well, let's put it in this one. This is clean. So I got two drops of the uh, solution out of our beaker in three cavities. Over here, what I'm going to do, testing for the presence of iron, I have some ammonium thiocyanate. I'm going to drop a crystal of this into this spot plate that has two drops of our solution. If it's got iron in it, what it'll do is it'll turn blood red. There it goes. That red color right there means we have iron in solution. Over here, I've got these two spots set up. I'm gonna put some DMG in here. Oh, wait a minute. First let me, yeah, let me go ahead and put DMG into this one. And you'll notice nothing happens. Now this solution here is the same exact thing. What I'm gonna do is put a couple drops of ammonia in here to neutralize the acid. And then what we'll do is add some DMG to it. And if there's nickel in here, this will turn bright pink. There you go. So we've got Confirmation of the presence of nickel. Confirmation of the presence of iron in our solution up here. This is page 100 in the book called Refining Precious Metals Wastes by C.M. Hoke. For the iron test, what we do is here's a quick test that reveals the presence of iron. Dissolve a gram of ammonium thiocyanate. In three or four ounces of water, place one drop of your unknown solution in the cavity and add a drop of the ammonium thiocyanate. If discovered iron is present, a deep blood red color will appear, usually at once. 
This deep red color constitutes a very delicate test as it will appear when even a minute trace of iron is present. Out of the same book, testing for nickel with DMG, it says dissolve some of the metal with a drop of nitric acid. We used hydrochloric. Instead, it says you can use either that or aqua regia. Add a drop or two of the DMG to that solution. Nothing will happen, just like we got the result we got out in our spot plate. Now, repeat, but with this difference. After dissolving the nickel, add a big drop of ammonia, then add the DMG. If you used enough ammonia to kill the acid, you will see a very beautiful and characteristic color change. It was a bright pink color. I got the information for identifying those metals in solution out of uh, Hoke's book in chapter 9 here, Identifying Metals in Solution. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to put a little bit of our solution on a uh, piece of filter paper here. And then we're going to do a stannous test, just to make sure we don't have any precious metals in solution. And there you see nothing. No kind of reaction, whatever, for precious metals in solution. All right, our uh, solution has been filtered off over here. That's what that looks like. I don't know what's in here, so I'm going to add it back into the main batch here. Filter paper and all. And then what I'm going to do, put a little bit more hydrochloric acid in here. acid and just let this uh, let this cook for a while Let's see if I can get some more of these base metals removed before we hit it with aqua region I let the solution settle and cool overnight now I'm gonna filter it off I've got a filter set up here I took a buckner funnel that's smaller than this one I wrapped a piece of filter paper up around it and inserted that filter paper down here. That'll create a little dam so that the particulate cannot get around that filter. I'm gonna take my dirty solution, pour it through this filter here, get it off of my uh, pieces of material in here, and then we'll hit it again with another uh, hydrochloric acid treatment here. Try to get some more of these base metals removed. I'm adding more hydrochloric acid here, and then I'll set it up on the heat. Fill it up to about the 1,000 milliliter level. Put it back up on the heat. Give it a stir here so we get that fresh acid uh, incorporated throughout the uh, granules or material that's down at the bottom of the beaker here. To get a quick status test of this material just to make sure we don't have any precious metals in solution. No reaction. Here you can see how effective that filter is at capturing all of the particles. So long as I don't overflow that filter, none of it will get past the filter and down into the flask. You'll notice that the solution in the bottom of the flask there is dark and the solution in the bottom of this beaker is dark. Those are dirty solutions. I'll be using color cues to determine when I've got platinum going into solution. And with that solution dirty like it is, I can't tell what color I'm getting when I add the aqua regia. So I want to get that cleaned up first. I'm giving this my very best effort, even though I know that I'm going to get less than a tenth of a gram 
if anything, out of this experiment. And I'm making this up as I go. I've had my material boiling in the hydrochloric acid now for about an hour and a half. And what we're going to do is turn this off now, let it cool down, and then I'll get that solution off of the material, pour it through this funnel here, and we'll go from there. My solution has been allowed to settle and cool now. This is the second hydrochloric treatment. And now notice it's still very dark green. That's what I'm going to try to get rid of here. So what we're going to do is pour this, uh, this second hydrochloric treatment off into this same filter and do another one. I'm going to keep doing this until I get that hydrochloric acid to clear up. All right, I got most of that uh, hydrochloric acid out of there now. What I'm gonna do is put some fresh acid in, hydrochloric acid, up to about the uh, 1,000 milliliter level. Give it a quick stir here, then we'll get it back up on the heat and do another hydrochloric acid extraction here. We'll keep doing this until I get uh, a clear solution, hopefully, or at least one I can see through a little bit. Okay, here's our fifth hydrochloric acid treatment. The solution's cleared up pretty good here. Down here, I've transferred the uh, solution out of the flask into this beaker to make room in the flask. Now I'm going to take our filter out. This has been allowed to set overnight. So I'm going to take our filter out here. It's dried up and come apart on me. And I'm going to transfer it into this beaker here. Now I'm going to install a new filter into the funnel here. Alright, let me move this out of the way. This will be my reaction vessel, this large beaker. And I'm going to pull this down and filter off this last bit of hydrochloric acid here. This will be the last treatment. This is treatment number five. You see that's kind of cleared it up real good. So we got most of the base metals out of this material in this beaker now. I got our fifth hydrochloric acid boil filtered off now. And what I want to do is just set this up here so that you can see the difference between the two solutions. This is the first four hydrochloric acid boils. Notice how dark the solution is. This is the fifth one. At least I can see through it. So now it should be clean enough in here to go and hit our uh, ground up material with some aqua regia. Right, let me move this down out of the way. There's been some folks complaining about uh, the length of the videos and the repetition that I put in these things. But in order to make it make sense as to what I'm doing, I try to include as much detail as possible in these videos. I'm adding this material out of this filter to the other filter because I don't know what's in this filtered material here, so I'm going to add it to this beaker. I'll be using this as my reaction beaker here. I'm going to remove these two solutions now. These are going to both be waste solutions for this part of the process. I'm going to use a stir plate. So let me get this down out of the way here and I'll get this set up.
Got a stir bar here. It's the biggest one I got. I'm gonna put that in. Here we go. We're gonna start the reaction now. I'm gonna add some hydrochloric acid here. It's probably half a liter. And start stirring. I got the filters on the stir plate, some hydrochloric acid. Now what I'm going to do is start slowly adding the material out of our beaker here. If you look up in there, that material resembles sand. It doesn't surprise me because glass is made from sand. Using hydrochloric acid to rinse the rest of this material out of this beaker. It's a real pain in the butt. It's just like trying to rinse sand out of a glass. Got some nitric acid here. I'm going to add about uh, 50 milliliters or so. And then I'm going to turn the heat on. And we're going to let this heat up. Let's see if we can get a reaction out of this to extract some platinum from those hard disk platters. It's been about 20 minutes since I added the nitric acid. Reach in here and give this a little bit of a stir here. Got about uh, just under 60 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid here. This has been on boiling for an hour now. I'm going to slowly add this additional nitric here. Now we'll just let it simmer. The solution has been boiling for three hours. I've added 200 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. What I have here is a standard test solution, platinum, one-tenth of one gram dissolved in 100 ml. It's a standard test solution. What I'm going to do is put a drop of this on this piece of filter paper here. And then we're going to take some status chloride. Put it on our filter paper with our standard test solution. And you see I get an orange color form there. It tells me I have platinum in solution. That's one-tenth of one gram per 100 ml or one gram per liter. Got a piece of filter paper here. What I'm going to do is uh, dip it down into our solution that's been boiling in aqua regia for about three hours now. And I'm going to test this with my same stannous chloride testing solution that I used on this one. And you'll notice that I get just an ever so faint indication, just a very, very faint orange color there. Uh, not enough to even hardly register with this very sensitive test. Okay, based on these test results, I'm going to conclude the experiment right here and uh, turn everything off. I'm not going to waste any more reagents or any more time trying to extract any platinum. 
from this hard disk drive material. So this will conclude the hard disk drive platter refining experiment. As you can see from my results out there, there's very little platinum to get out of those things. I give this my very best effort. It took three days of work and a lot of reagents and I got nearly zero platinum from those hard disk platters. However, I'd still like to give James a thank you for sending those in. I appreciate that. And now we know, uh, based on my results in this experiment, how much platinum you can expect from these hard disk platters. That'll conclude the video. Thanks for watching.